Hey everybody, this is Bob at the Modeler's Workbench. Thank you so much for watching. Today, we're gonna start a build of the ITLA, which is Imagine That Laser Art. Uh, this is the rooftop mechanical building set. So we'll be building this. I also uh, have another larger kit from the same company that I'll do another build video on. I can't speak highly enough about this company. I love these kits. Uh, I think when you see how they go together and what they look like when you're done, I'm sure you'll probably agree. Uh, so we'll go over to the bench, we'll open up the package, we'll see what's inside, and then we'll go ahead and start building these. I have built kits from this company before, so I understand how they go together and um, how to paint them, but it's all super easy, super great uh, kits to build. But let's go over to the workbench and you'll see what I mean. All right, so we opened up the kit. We've got uh, some color photographs, very nice photographs. You can look and see what it should look like when you're done painting it. Uh, looks like in these photos, the building is your basic red brick color. We've got some mortar wash in there, uh, concrete color for the tops here and the sills. Um, some signage included, signs here. Uh, this kit comes with the building, it comes with an exhaust stack, it comes with an air conditioner unit and some duct work, um, antennas, wood pallets, wood walkway, and billboard sign frame. All of their kits are laser cut on this MDF board. Um, they should pop out of the carrier sheet, but you want to be really gentle. What I usually do is very easily just move these cut lines and pop them out. You really don't want to break these little tabs here, but if you do, um, they, they should glue in. Like after you get the building, you could always slide the other piece in, but just easily rock them and pop them out of their carrier sheet like this. I like to do this prior to painting. I don't like to paint them all on the sheet. That way I can get all the areas here. Uh, again, we'll just pop them all out of their carrier sheet. The This company does the same thing with its larger buildings too, where the wood sills are cut. Sometimes I find that you've got to use a real thin razor blade and just kind of push on the inside a little bit, uh, just so you don't break them. Uh, you could use a number 11 blade to pop them out. They should come out, but just be careful and work the tabs and then they should pop out of their little carrier like this and don't lose them because these are the window sills they're going to be painted a different color so i'll pop those out everything's going to get taped down to some cardboard and i'm going to use some uh eh, camo khaki primer paint for these because i i like it it comes out super flat we'll pop everything out we'll paint it all up and then um, we'll come back to the bench here and we'll go on with the build Okay, I'm gonna take back what I just said about painting these uh, first. I think it's okay to paint um, their other buildings the way they go together with the tabs. The tabs are a lot bigger and, and I've pre-painted the walls uh, and that seemed to work well, but I test fitted these pieces together and the way that these go together, the fit is super tight. I mean, not tight that it's hard, it just there, it's a tight, beautiful fit. I mean, the engineering on, on, on these kits is so fantastic, but that that's a really tight fit on these corners. And my concern was that if I painted these wall sections first, that thin layer of paint that would get in between these uh, corner slots would be enough that I would find myself in trouble and these wouldn't fit together so well and I'd probably be sanding uh, these out. So that would have been a mistake. So I am going to glue, with just wood glue, all of these corners in here, gently working them in to get the fit. Just like this. You can see how snug they go together. So 
it's a nice fit, but I think I'm probably going to just glue each corner as I work around. But I, I'm gonna glue this entire structure together first, then I'm gonna paint it. And my suggestion, if you're doing something like this, this kit would be to do the same. I think if you pre-paint them first, you're gonna put too much paint in these slots and you're gonna have a hard time uh, getting them together because the, the fit is snug. But beautiful, I mean beautiful fit. I'm gently working it with my fingers. I probably don't want to get any glue inside here either. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit them tight in here and I'm going to run a bead of glue on the inside corners. I think that's going to be enough to hold this together. And I and believe it or not, I think when the primer goes on, it's probably going to put a little extra holding in these uh, corners. But once this is together, I don't think it's going to go anywhere once I put some glue on the inside. So, I mean, there we are. And, and it kind of squared itself up quite nicely. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue all this up and, uh, and then I'll paint it the camo color. All right, so the main building is glued together and is uh, drying. It got sprayed with some primer. Um, the chimney is two pieces. There's a little piece that glues to the top of this. There will be a cap that goes on and this will straddle the wall uh, against the wall and then this part of the chimney will stick. We'll, we'll show that after we get done, but you wanna do that, let that dry. The HVAC unit is three pieces here um, and they get glued together. This The one without the legs on it gets sandwiched in between. That's uh, pretty straightforward. I think other kits do this kind of um, assembly. If you squeeze a little wood glue out and let it sit for a few minutes, it'll get tacky and a little sticky. I kind of like doing that. And they won't slide around so much. So, yeah, I mean, pretty basic stuff here. We're just gonna line them up and sandwich that middle piece in. This whole unit's gonna be covered with um, some laser cut pieces that if you look on the instructions here, it shows how you put it together, you sandwich it all together here, and then you've got these pieces, uh, these vents that will go all around. Um, and then uh, when it's all together, it'll it'll kind of look like that vent there in the picture. So you put uh, these together, the same with the um, duct work. The duct work is two pieces that get glued together here. Same with this little duct work. There's etched lines on the outside um, that'll represent some detail of separation of the pieces of the duct. Uh, so make sure those are facing out and we'll glue those two together. Uh, the roof, I, you know, I didn't really prime it. I just put some grimy black across the wood. Um, we'll set this in uh, and then do some weathering powders at the very, very, very end. Um, so the other pieces that I've got going on here uh, these are some windows that I I didn't really prime this. I just went ahead and put some dark olive green uh, paint on it. We will um, sponge a little earth colored paint to make it look like the uh, paint is wearing off. Uh, some of these vents here I will paint black and then we'll sponge some rust on them. Those will go in some of the windows. Uh, same with the ladder. Um, we'll paint the ladder up with the ladder standoffs. I'll show you that later. Um, we'll get that done. So let me get these pieces glued together here and then uh, we'll sand the edges. Uh, we'll go from there. I want to show you uh, something real quick. So uh, I again, I didn't prime any of this. I, I These windows and doors, the first coat I put on was like a dark olive color. Then after that was dry, I lightly dabbed quickly. 
like this some pale green paint so a lighter green over the darker green uh, on that and uh, and then after all this dries here then we'll do a little bit of uh, earth just a little bit to show the uh, worn out paint uh, the ladder in these vents I painted a uh, this is from Micromark. I really like this stuff. This is grimy black. It come, the, You can get the brush application and the airbrush application uh, formula. Uh, so I, I like this color for black. You know what this is? This is so uh, close. Probably, to me, the same thing as that old Floquil grimy black, which I absolutely loved that they don't make anymore. Um so th this was the closest color to that old style grimy black that I could find. And I really like it. And then there'll be rust on the top of, of those pieces. Um, once you glue some of these pieces together, just take a wide um, a piece of sandpaper or anything you want. Uh, and then just brush the edges so that they're flat on all of them. Now I'm gonna paint, uh, this one's getting covered, so it probably doesn't have to be painted. I might prime it, I'm not sure. But you, um, but the vents I, I wanna paint like either a, a silver or a, a steel gray, something around there. And that's a lighter color, so I'm gonna have to prime these white. So it'll be like a light white underneath uh, as the base coat and underneath a light color. Um, so I need to do that. I wanna show a tool that I got from Amazon um, kind of a splurge tool though. It's really nice and handy to have. Uh, this is an Aromax rechargeable mini drill. Uh, so here's the case. You push it in, it comes out. It has some uh, drill bits in it. Did get some extra drill bits, I believe, with the set. Uh, then again, this charges up with a, a USB. Um, then you can put the drill bits in the call it now it's not this is meant for more finer work i find this is great for drilling holes in rooftops for pipes and everything else and then what else you can do with it is i'm going to drill a hole in the bottom so that i can have some place to hold this to paint uh, so you can turn it on just put a little a nice speed it does do different speeds i believe for um like maybe castings uh and whatnot to hold it so i got a little hole in there then i'll take a uh, a q-tip i'll take some of the tip off of i mean q-tip listen to me uh, i take the uh, uh toothpick and um and take a little tip off just so it squeezes in there and holds well. And then I'll take one of these alligator clip uh, pieces to hold it up even higher. So now I can spray paint this and then I can stick this in to dry. Uh, works for any castings or whatever, just that little uh, mini drill. I thought I'd show you that, kind of kind of like it. It's not really required. You could use a, a Dremel or and even a, a little hand drill, but kind of a neat little tool to have at the bench. So, uh, yeah, let me keep going with this and, uh, and we'll come back on the next step. I want to show you what I did first with the um, completed glued together and primed with camo khaki paint uh, main building. There is a line which separates this top uh, cement uh, part of the wall with the brick. I put some painter's tape along that line to block it off. Uh, the first thing I did was paint it with uh, a cement gray. A any darker cement color uh, would work for this technique. Uh, and that that's the first layer. And once that was dry, I took a sponge and I used this Deco Art patio paint tex texture, and it's uh, a light granite. It has a very light texture to the paint. Uh, I think it's perfect for HO scale. 
on, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's just this sand mix inside of it. Um, and if you dab that on, I think I showed that in a previous video or some build I did, but if you dab that on with the sponge over the dark, just kind of hitting it, what you'll get is you'll get the lighter color of that texture paint and then some of the dark behind it and it will give you that two-tone concrete look with that little bit of sand mix on the top. And once that dries, I will go and run the tape on that line on the top to block that, and then we'll uh, paint the bricks. I did start to paint the bricks of the chimney with, um, actually the first color I used was Heritage Brick from Americana. Um, so that's the first color of the brick uh, on the chimney. And then after that, I'll use my, I'll do my usual method of some lighter colors here or there. Um, we'll spray it with some dull coat and then we'll do some uh, mortar mix in between. I'm gonna show you how the palettes go together on this kit. It comes with uh, two palettes and each palette, it's three pieces that go together. And what they want you to do is they want you to take the top of the palette. These were sprayed with camo khaki paint and lay that down on here. And then a little bit of glue where the rails go. Not much, doesn't require a lot of glue. And then this middle piece will go across like that. So now you've got the bottom piece, you've got the middle piece on top of that. And then the last piece to go is this bottom one here. And this will end up coming across the bottom. So basically we'll get, um, we'll get the pallets We'll get the pallets here. Pretty nice pallets, actually, to be hidden on top of a roof. I'll probably uh, lean it up against the building so maybe you can see it better than if it's just on the on the flat. That's how the pallets go together. Okay, so um, I dropped the roof section in, and the kit has uh, a couple of little... Uh, strips of wood that you can put in just as a brace so you can set the roof down and glue it on. The instructions call that, well, they call for that you can actually use, it's up to you, the wooden roof as a squaring tool to put the walls together. But I would not recommend doing that. These walls fit super tight. You want them in all the way as much as they can go. And I found that the roof uh, piece was just a little bit bigger than what this opening would be. So once I got everything glued together, and it squares up pretty easy, uh, once I got everything uh, glued together, I just took that roof section on all four edges uh, on the bench and just kind of went back and forth all around until it just dropped in uh, nicely. I guess you could decide how far down you wanted the roof to go, whatever reveal you wanted this part uh, to go. Um, I, I didn't go much. I, I think it's about two millimeters uh, down and, uh, and all that's glued in. Then I started to um, paint the brick and the inside of the windows has some brick detail that you wanna get. I'm using 
uh, red iron oxide uh, to start. Um, I'm just doing a sponge. You could do a brush, but I, I kind of think that the sponge is nice to just go and dab all over the brick. I did use a little brush on the inside of the windows. The, brush, the sponge is pretty quick. And you can see where when I finish that top um, cement piece, I, I went and put the painter's tape across that line just to protect it. Once I get all of this color on, we'll let it dry for a few minutes and then I'll I'll figure out what colors I want. I think I might dab on a little orange here or there. Ter maybe terracotta. I'll I'll decide what I want to do. But yeah, that's it. I mean just basically go around and um and dab on your brick color. Uh, we'll let it dry and then we're, uh, we'll put on a couple more colors and then we've got to hit some uh, dull coat on this to seal it. And that's that. Um, after all that's done and I get the bricks done and it's all dull coated, I will do the mortar. The mortar I will do before I set these windows and I set the window sills in and I'll show you how that goes. It's, it's a pretty neat design how it goes together. I like it. Okay, so let me show you the um, this air handling unit. If you remember, we glued three pieces of MDF together to make up the box. I painted it black just, um, I can see, you know, if I needed to re-sand it, you would put a little paint on it. I want it absolutely flat. And then there is some thin uh, laser board stock that have the skins that go over the unit. Uh, so I glued, if you, and actually if you look at it, the, the sides will go on first. Uh, the two smaller sides go on first. And then the longer sides will cover that. After all those four are on, the top will go over that. And then you've got these really small vents that will then go over the sides to cover that. And then I'll rust the corners and edges over. Um, I What I did was I painted everything a light green. I used um, like Hauser light green with a sponge. I dabbed all the the panels with that and then I dabbed a darker green in spots using this uh, olive green a little darker I put a dark rust color on the fan blades I put dark rust colored in these little uh, vents here on um, on the sides dark some dark rust color and then I threw some silver on the sides so that it will stand out behind the behind the vent cover. So I'm working on all of that. I also I had sponge painted the um, the windows uh, a dark green and then a light green on top of that. And we'll install those after. I'll show you how those go in. It's pretty neat. So that's what I'm going to do now, get that all done. The main building I'll show you is drying after a coat of uh, dull coat, and we'll do a mortar mix on top of that, and I'll show you what I did with the bricks for that building. All right, so I showed this on the previous build, my mortar mix. I use this uh, Easy Sand. Uh, sheetrock powder it's a heck of a lot more shelf stable than joint compound um, I uh, don't like the way after a while joint compound will uh, get mold and stuff in it so that's what I use uh, one spoonful I just put in here with some water 
no real crazy measurement. I just made it um, just a little soupy. I just, it's it, it's a wash. It, it's a mortar wash. I, I don't want it pasty. The uh, structure here was painted uh, with, what did I use? I, I used like a red iron oxide and a little terracotta on it. And then this bittersweet chocolate I paint I used uh, just for a few bricks here and there. When you're going to paint individual bricks on any building, don't try to do it with a paintbrush. Just just grab a, a, a toothpick and dab it in the paint and you'll be able to just get a little um, paint on the bricks. Makes it much more easier. After that, the whole thing was sprayed with dull coat. Now we'll do a mortar wash, uh, old ratty brush. I have the mortar mix, and then you just wanna, you just wanna take it and put it on here. The stuff with this wash is, I'm gonna put it in, I'm pushing it into the little uh, brick lines here and we let it dry and after it dries you'll see it's going to be pretty white and then we will um we'll wash some of that mortar off so that off the face of it it'll dull down the brick too which i like so this is all i'm doing just kind of pushing that little wash into the into the grooves here and we'll let it dry and we'll take a look at it and maybe some spots you got to redo it again it all depends on what look you want i mean i've seen people use joint compound um, add some water to it make the joint compound a lot soupier and do it that way and and to be honest with you i've done it that way in the past And it works. I've used uh, Robert's brick mortar. That stuff, I, I think that stuff's almost the same thing as this because um, you you take, you take use it the same way. You kind of wash it into the grooves and then let it dry. And then you have to wash the face of the, of the brick off a few times to get to the desired look that you want. On this side, uh, I've already installed um, one of the little uh, window vents. Uh, what you do with these is you push them in from behind. You want either a window or a vent into the opening to be flush with the inside of the, of the structure, and then you can glue that in there. I used a little canopy glue. Uh, once... Um, once we get all of those glued in, I'll show you how the uh, sills go in. The sills will just push into these slots here. Same with the door, flush way back on the inside, glued. Uh, we'll get to that after I let some of this stuff here dry. And, uh, and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so um, it's only been about 10 minutes or so. And you can see how that mortar wash dries. Um, I mean, it's not 100% dry. It's only been about 10 minutes, but I can start to do a little wiping, uh, which I did on this side. Uh, and it's just wiping the face of the brick. So, strong paper towel, fresh water, get it a little wet, and then just lightly brush over that brick face to take the mortar off the face of it. That's it, stop, let it go, let it dry, and we'll see what it looks like. Keep turning your paper towel so you're not dragging some of the mortar that you've mit you wiped off on this side onto the other side of the building. Yep, we'll just wipe that off. And just do that on all sides. And we'll let that dry and we'll take a look and 
you may or may not have to wipe a couple of times on the face of it to get to the look that you want. I also installed um, some of the vents in these openings here that are on the side of the vehicle. There's three of them, was one, two, and three. Uh, they were they were a little on the looser side. They, I need them to be flush with the inside of the wall and they would fall through. So what I did was I just took some cardstock and I glued cardstock in there. And that way I could put some glue on the back of these vents and push them up against that cardstock and glue them in that way. You can see on this side, I've got one of the sills all put in. They were painted a concrete color. So you got the little sill here and they will just slide into the slot that's there. And obviously you want to glue it. So glue, glue those pieces of the sills in after you get the windows or the vents in uh, and that, that'll be the next step. And I honestly, I can go ahead and do that now because I've already wiped my mortar and I may have to just wipe a little bit as we go on, but it's really not gonna interfere with that at all. So that, that, that'll be the next step. All right, so we've got this little thing put together. All of the windows and the doors go inside this way so that they're flush with this inside wall and glued. And then the acetate gets glued behind that. And it's the same with the things on the window that are these uh, like louvers. They, everything goes in from behind and gets glued flush and then the acetate behind the windows and the doors. And then the strips are all pre-cut, laser cut, for the sills all get pushed in then from the front and glued down. So that is done on all the sides. As far as um, the, the sills go, what I did after they were primed with the khaki, they were painted with this chalk paint cocoon. And then after that, they just had some uh, weathering powders put on, which was uh, a pan pastel. And this is my go-to, like for almost everything, I end up using this raw umber uh, powder. And what that did was that went on the window sills. It went on the bottom of the structure and the doors and some of the windows. It just, it went on top of the roof, some black powder for the top of the chimney. Again, um, painted with a cocoon, the same with this cocoon. Um, this little antenna is laser cut that went together with a little super glue uh, and held it in place for a few seconds. Um, and then I, I kind of put that antenna at just a little bit of an angle for just a little bit of an interest uh, on that. Uh, the kit does come with these little um, details. There's just some thin pieces of wood for uh, conduit. You can run that any way you want. It comes with some signs. I did that. Uh, came with this little ladder with the standoffs. So I did that. Um, so yeah, now this, looking at this structure here, this can go on top of a roof or a roof structure. It can go for like a mechanical building in a, in an industrial part of the layout that could sit somewhere, um, track side. I mean, it, it really could go anywhere. This little, this little fella. Uh, also what I did with the kit was it had, um, that little, uh, kind of AC HVAC unit that was painted green and uh, rust pigments and such on that. The little duct work was put together, painted gray, and then some rust padded on it. Dark rust for the 
these little pieces here that slide on. And that would go together like that. I did one of the one of the little um, palettes. Uh, this was painted uh, a wood color. I, I actually did take my blade, my number 11 blade, and put some deeper cuts into the top of the wood palette after it was painted like old wood color. Um, I ended up putting a Vallejo wash over that. And then the best trick that I ever learned uh, for weathering wood is that when you're all done, you take some, um, just any kind of white paint, this is white wash, and put some on the brush, dry it off so it's a dry brush, and then just hit the tops of the wood. And that, that, will, that really goes a lot to make the wood pop. I did the same way on this part of the walkway. The kit comes with two walkways, a long one, a short one. Um, same thing, uh, painted like a brown color, uh, number 11 blade to make deeper wood marks, the Vallejo wash, and then a, a very light dry brush of the white. And you can use that, like if it was on a roof, then it would be a roof walk, kind of out of the door, um, like that. And then, I mean, this can go anywhere, really. Whatever, however you want to arrange it on the roof, you could always lean a pallet up against the building. So that's the kit. Uh, all done. I think it's a great kit. I think it's fantastic for maybe somebody that wants to, that's never built a, a craftsman kit before. Uh, this again is the ITLA scale models mechanical equipment building kit. Um, I believe this kit was a little more because it had some extra details to it. Uh, I believe they do sell one of these with just just the building without the added roof details. So yeah, give this company a try. It, it, I think they come out fantastic. Uh, I'll, I'll do a bigger kit from them on another build. Do a little more close up video. You can see. Maybe a little better than when I was just holding it up. I guess the chimney doesn't really make a whole lot of sense with the building. Um, but I went ahead and put it on. And the antenna is really nice. I actually kind of wish they sold a sheet of just these antennas that you could put all over the layout. I, I think I think they look great. I think the ladder with the standoffs looks great too. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this build video, building this little fella here. Uh, it, this one's a lot of fun. It's quick. Uh, I mean, I, I worked on this along with other projects at the same time. So th this little this little kit does not take a long time to put together and it looks great when you're done. Um, I think last time I checked my channel, I, I was over like 200 subscribers. I That blows me away because I'm just doing this for fun. And I remember saying to my wife, I would be so happy if you know, 50 people watched one of my videos, I would feel like, wow, that that's awesome. So to have so many people checking out my uh, builds is is really awesome for me. So thank you so much for that. And I've got another project lined up uh, on the bench that I will uh, film and post. So again, thank you guys so much for watching it. This is Bob Modeler's Workbench. Go to your workbench and keep modeling.